Hello. Come on. Hi, girl. These are pretty affectionate little chicks. Put my hand in here and they just start snuggling up underneath it. <laughs> pretty darn cool. You guys are a mess. Don't be... Uh-oh, look at that. We got a jumper. <laughs> they do like to be on the high spots, don't they? And I don't care how often I change that water. They just trash it within <clears throat> no time at all. Okay, girls. I'm going to put the top back on here. I'll get you fed up. I'll get that feeder full before I take off to town to go get lumber. Well, you know I gotta try, right? I mean, that's crazy. That is crazy. And let me show you this. So this will rest on top of the concrete. So it'll actually be up a little higher. And this is adjustable. This is awesome. This is so incredible, so incredible. Nice. Am I going to get that lucky twice? There it is.
Beautiful. It's like a layer of rock on top and then it's sand underneath. It's beautiful. And it's 75 degrees right now with the breeze. Butterfly. That's two feet right there, another six inches, and I'll be as deep as that other hole was. That's crazy. I love it. Oh, goodness. Whoa. Morning, girls. It's my last day of sleeping in today. I go back to work on uh, Monday and it's Saturday. So I'm going to go ahead and dig some holes today. I'm going to throw the kilt on because Sunday uh, it's going to be laundry day. Even though uh, I haven't been working for the last week, <laughs> the kilt is getting disgusting. <laughs> so I'm going to go get dressed and get busy. So I was excited when I hit this Brandon or... Uh, uh, sand and gravel yesterday because pr uh, frost heaves do not affect sand and gravel like they affect regular soil. So once I got down to sand and gravel, um, that meant I really didn't have to go any further. But at the same time, I want to make sure that I have a good base for the foundation. And again, I'm not a builder, but this is roughly 30 inches, a little bit more clean out in there, and, and I'll have basically two and a half feet underground. I'm gonna make sure that one's two and a half feet underground. And then talking to uh, Ward, and if you've watched the channel for a while, you know Ward's a buddy of mine who's, who's a builder. <clears throat> basically, he's told me that I only need three sauna tubes per row uh, because I've tripled up my beams and they'll, they'll span those three sauna tubes with no problem at all. But I feel more confident putting a fourth one in, especially with how easy these holes are to dig right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and evenly space two more sauna tubes in here. Um, I don't know about that though. Cause I basically, like I discussed before, the loft is gonna cover half of it. Um, so I kind of want one right in the middle to hold some extra weight. Although I don't think that's gonna be an issue either. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and yeah, I'm gonna dig two more. Um, so I'm gonna have four in each row, which means I'm gonna have a total of 12 sauna tubes on here. And I'm only going with an eight inch sauna tube. And again, you know, according to Ward, I don't really need to worry about any, any uh, uh, rebar in, you know, any steel inside this sauna tube, but I'm going to run one down the middle anyway. His, his mentality was, dude, if, if, if we have a quake big enough to, to snap your, uh, your sauna tubes, trust me, your house is already in trouble. <laughs> uh, but again, for my own personal thoughts on it, I'm going to go ahead and shove a piece of steel down each one. Um, it just adds that little extra strength. Um, and in a lot of other builds I've seen, they've done multiple 
pieces, like little cages of, of, of steel that they put down, but they've used bigger sauna tubes as well. Uh, so I'm going to finish digging these holes today and uh, see where we're at. But yeah, I'm excited. This is, this is going much better than I thought it would.
a much nicer marking it off. It was uh, four holes dug to 30 inches in about 30 minutes, so I don't know, less than 10 minutes per hole. Uh, and I'm not killing myself. It's actually pretty simple. I break the top layer of dirt with uh, the old post hole type digger. Then when I get to the rock and gravel, I break all that up, pull it all out and throw it on there. And as soon as I break through that layer uh, and I get down to the sand and gravel layer, I can just go ahead and use this one again. And it works pretty fast, but uh, yeah, I'm very satisfied with how fast this is going. Uh, I, I cannot stress enough how much more this was going to cost me if I had to bring in somebody to, to drill these holes for me. Um, and while these ones are all lined up on the center, when I get the sauna tubes in there, I'll make all the final adjustments to make sure that everything's lined up. Like we know on this one over here, I had an issue. Uh, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to kill myself. So there's four holes, about 30 minutes. I'm going to take a break for about 15 or 20 minutes because I'm sweating like a hog. It's about 70, I don't know, 75 degrees out here right now. And, uh, and I need to take a break. <laughs> and I take breaks often. Uh, but again, I'm not killing myself. This is going to be the hardest part, I think, of, of the entire build is getting this concrete right. Um, you know, and once that's on, then it's just... You know, it's all woods and wooden nails after that, right? Wooden metal after that. Just boards. All right, break time. I'm very satisfied with how that came out. Oh. Something I learned a long time ago was if you're doing something that you're not used to doing on a regular basis, take a lot of breaks. Uh, so I knocked out these four holes, probably overdid it, took a break, knocked out a hole, I'm gonna take a break. I have three more holes to go. A um, Couple of reasons. One, your muscles aren't used to doing that kind of work. Uh, so I'm sure I'm gonna feel this tomorrow. And two, you're still gonna get done, especially in, in a situation like this. I mean, I'm, there's no sense in hurting myself or burning myself out but I am sweating like a hog today. <laughs> I mean, this hat is soaked all the way through here. Uh, and the main reason why I'm always wearing ball caps uh, and I've always got them turned backwards is so that it captures the sweat and doesn't run down into my face and my eyes. That's the main reason why I wear it. But yeah, that last hole took a bit out of me. There was a, I had to get down pretty deep before I actually got to that sand. I'm still at that 30 inch mark and I still hit sand and gravel before then. So. I'll be good, but I was like, wow. And that's kind of like one of the higher spots um, on the whole thing. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing here is I'll get the rest of these holes dug. Uh, and then tomorrow being Sunday, um, I gotta go into town and do laundry, like I said, cause I haven't, I haven't done laundry in a week and a half. <laughs> I mean, I have work clothes for Monday, but I wanna wash the kilt. Um, and I'll take tomorrow off and then I work on Monday. And probably if, uh, I don't know, if, SBS is open on Monday or not, but I'll go in there and talk to them about uh, eight inch sauna tubes and I'll get enough to fill up all these holes. That one over there, to be honest with you, was nothing more than a, uh, you know, I wanted to pick one up so I could have a visualization when I laid the holes in and when I laid the holes out. <laughs> um, that's going to be too short for what I want because I want at least two feet um, above the, the ground level um, back here which means that when I get over to here, it'll be probably closer to three feet, uh, which is good because my wet wall, all my plumbing will be down on this side of the house anyway. Uh, so I'll have more room to get up underneath there and do whatever work I got to do. But yeah. How do you eat a cake? One piece at a time. One piece at a time, folks. It's a pretty day though. God, it's beautiful out. I just hope we get our afternoon breeze today.
Thank you.